And of course, in those days, we were related to everybody. Everybody was related to each other, you see. And, uh, and we used to say like that, aren't we all the children of one father and one mother? And that was, their, that was the way that they looked at life, you see. And so the important things was to be together, to, to uh, have relatives, you see. And I'm going to kind of skip around here, so you're going to change this. There's a lot of wisdom that uh, one picks up from old people, and, and one of those is that uh, everything that the Creator put on this planet, put in wherever we live, had a purpose and had a right to be where it was. time a fellow was coming from uh, up uh, on the Canadian line coming back to tell the, p the people there about uh, the uh, military was always seemed to be chasing them and they realized that, that they had stopped that and so they went to ride back and tell the people at uh, the, the village at Wakapala that they wouldn't have to worry anymore because they could settle down to a kind of a more or less of a normal existence. And so coming back, he had to cross a kind of a lake. It was frozen over. There was about two inches of snow over there, so you couldn't tell uh, about uh, how slick it was or anything like that. And so he was loping across there, and all at once the horse slipped and down it went. Broke the horse's front shoulder, and at the same time lit on the man's leg and broke his leg. And so there he was in sub-zero weather and uh, uh, had the uh, face being frozen to death. About that time, two big male wolves came and saw the predicament he was in, and they put their noses underneath his arms, lifted him up and drug him, and drug him up over this hill and down, and right down below the hill, of course, was this little camp uh, at Wakapala. And so when they got down there far enough to where they could hear them, uh, these wolves let up a tremendous howling. And of course, the people looked up and saw these two wolves there, and they went to investigate and found out this man was lying there about half frozen to death. And so they took him back down, and of course, they uh, were able to rub snow on him and so forth like that, and saved him from freezing. And so thereafter, after that, every spring, when the, the wolves' babies were being born, the, the uh, Indians would take and, and after they had made a kill of buffaloes, they would go, go down there and leave pieces of meat all along the, the, uh, uh, the uh, Grand River where they were. And so uh, they said that even years and years later, they'd go, as they'd ride by, there, they'd see wolves over there. And they said, they are the offspring of those two original wolves that, that came through there. was a guy, I think he was a uh, Romanian, I'm not sure, but he came and dropped off of the railroad there come in the old days, and so he had a pool hall there, and they all called him Jim Ganashkina. That means crazy Jim, because he talked real fast, you see, and he, he, was, he was just kind of a, a, a fellow that was, blah, 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 blah. you couldn't understand him hardly, and so they called him Crazy Jim, and he had a little pool hall there. And that's where most of the young Indian boys hung out, you see. And of course, they'd charge their pool, and he was always getting after them about him. Doksha kak juju, doksha kak juju. In other words, I'll pay you later. She said, that's all I hear from you, from you boys, is doksha kak juju, I'll pay you later. But anyhow, this one day, I went in there with my son, Phil, 
And uh, uh, Jim was standing behind his bar there. And so I went over there to him and we started talking to him like that. And he said, well, he said, he said, uh, Philip, he called me Philip. He said, I want to tell you a story about your grandfather. And I said, well, okay, shoot. So he said, one day, he said, those guys were in there shooting pool. And he said, they had those little doors that were not uh, made to uh, any uh, uh, standard. They were, he just cut a hole in the wall and just stick a door in there, cut it, make it fit. And so he said that as he, he, he noticed the darn uh, room kind of darken, he looked up there and here was my grandfather. My grandfather stood about six foot two or three, and he was tall and big, and he had a black vestment on. Yeah. And so he said the darn room kind of turned black. He looked up there like that. He said, so here, here come uh, my, my grandfather, Deloria, I see, Tipi Sapa. And he come over to Jim, and he said, uh, he said, your grandfather looked at me like that. And he said, to, he took, first he took his hat off, and he passed around these, these uh, young Indian boys, and he said they threw in a dime or something like that. Then he came over to, to, uh, uh, in front of Jim, and took his hat off, and Jim says, Jim, he said, I'm, I'm, uh, I want a, uh, a donation for the Brotherhood of Christian Unity. So Jim said, I looked at him, he says, uh, well, uh, Mr. DeLore, he says, I'm not an Indian. And he says, I'm not an Episcopalian either. He said, your grandfather looked me right now and he says, well, you're a man, aren't you? He said, Jim said, I never had, you know, he said, I just felt like I was a man. After all these years, I've been a super minority. Uh, so many people do, never get the opportunity to, to understand these things, and they, and they have the idea that, that uh, our people were savages and so forth like that. Kind of outlaws, you might say, and depicted people as being uh, less than, almost less than human. And I really resented that because of the fact that they were just the opposite. And if you want to take a look back in history and find out when the early, early colonists came into this country, how were they received? History will tell you. History will tell you that they were received with open arms. They were fed and kept alive for a whole winter. And then as they moved west, the oppression that they know, had known in Europe came with them. John Wayne did as much damage to our people as, as Custer did because of the fact that he portrayed the Indian always as a savage. The whole theme of the movie was to go out and kill the Indians. That was the big thrill, you see. And to me, that, that, uh, the, 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 the opposite was true. And uh, because our Indian people were people who were gentle, kind people. As a matter of fact, the, the two people in our, among our Indian people that are, are the most precious are the old, old people and the little children, those two, those two classes of people. They're the best. They're, they're, they're the ones who they, they uh, uh, held in high regard, you see, because they realized that the, the young ones learned from the old ones, and the young ones were the future. Ah. One time we had this old man, 